Meet Grandpa. So this is the spring maintenance number three. This is a Royal Nor Commander. It's a uh, Royal Nor is a Belgian brand that was uh, made in Herstal, Herstal, Belgium. And uh, yeah, that's as far as my knowledge knows of these bikes. No, it's a 98 cc, so uh, it's actually a motorcycle. It's a 98 cc two-speed, a dry clutch system, and yeah, a lot of cool details on this bike. This carburetor is pretty cool. We got the hard line for the fuel, and uh, you can see the dry clutch. Let's try to engage it. It actually gets stuck half of the time. A torpedo style rear brake, which you can, yeah, the pedals are bent as, yeah, as a sack of bananas. So a torpedo style rear brake, which you can actually deactivate or activate. So when you push backwards, this uh, piece gets pulled back and you actually activate the brake. So disengage because when actually when the rear brake is engaged and you want to walk backwards with the bike it actually engages the brake and you're stuck so the papers i have for this bike say it's a 1947 model but uh, it's actually unknown of which year this bike is uh, when i first got it um, I was googling and I found an old folder which I am unable to find again. I've searched for hours and hours and hours after that folder uh, saying the Royal Nor Commander 98cc. It actually had two models on the folder, 98cc and 92cc. It actually also had a tandem motorcycle and these, this folder was from 1943. But talking to people, they say it was a war, probably not a lot of bikes were made then. So I think that's actually pretty plausible. But then again, the, the folder I found, but I'm unable to find it again, stated 1943. Another person I spoke to who has another Royal Nor, not this model, but knows a lot of them, of uh, Royal Nor models. Uh, he states this should be early 50s, uh, more like 1953 instead of 43. And so I took the average and I, uh, when I have uh, got papers for this bike, I went for 1947. Uh, the frame number is actually a four digit number. It's a thousand and something. I can't remember. I, was, I also won't post it online. So, uh, so yeah, four digit frame number, which is also pretty cool. We got this uh, cool case here to store some... Uh, some supplies, maybe a screwdriver and a spare spark plug. I don't know if actually is something in here. Ooh, what's that? Oh, it's a reflector. Cool. Let's put it back. Maybe I should actually put in some stuff here. A tiny leather strap here, which is pretty cool. So I've actually managed to get this bike from my uncle. Uh, his dad bought it uh, brand new way way back in the day uh, it actually has been flooded a couple of times it was stored in the basement and the basement had some water a couple of times which you can see it has a lot of rust but i like it it's uh it has a very cool patina if actually the discussion goes on about restoring or keeping a bike in original patina i'm actually 90 percent of the time going to keep it in original we have the Gitan and the Kenny Roberts, but the Gitan was a failed restoration earlier. So in that case, I will restore it back to new. And the Kenny Roberts was also a started restoration and there was no matching colors and all the parts. So in that case, I would go to a restoration. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool bike. It's really horrible to drive. The seating position is absolutely awful. You're straight ahead, you're straight above the pedals. My knees actually hit the steering wheel in certain positions of the pedals. The gearbox is actually worse than the Gitan. You have uh, first gear, then neutral, and then second gear, but they're actually almost 180 degrees apart from each other. 
180 degrees looking at the handle. So in this bike also you have to dislocate your wrist at two positions to get into gear. Another big issue with this bike is it's 98 cc's. So by law this is a motorcycle. 50 cc's is a moped and then with mopeds you're allowed to use the bike lane if cars can go over uh, 50 kilometers an hour. But the issue with this bike is it only gets up to 40, 45 if the wind is in my back. But I have to ro ride on the main road, which is really annoying. Cars overtake you and they actually almost run you off the road because you're so slow. So I don't drive this bike a lot. Usually in the town center to get some groceries. But it's really scary to drive on the road because cars actually run me out, out off of the road. The really first test drive, I went back to my uncle's, which is, well, on this bike, it's a 10 minute drive. I think it's maybe three or four kilometers. And I've got run off the road twice in that four kilometers, even by a truck. Um, I know of one other one in existence in Belgium. It was for sale six or seven years ago, maybe eight. But then I've never heard about it again. I don't know, maybe the owner still has it or or he trashed it or I don't know, it might as well be buried. But it was a restored one and it was actually restored badly. So I don't know if he sold it. So yeah, some uh, pretty cool details on this motorcycle. This bike actually runs meh, okay. What we do have to do is make a head gasket out of some copper sheet. The carb should be clean, but I'll probably take it off anyway and clean it. Uh, the tank itself is pretty clean. But getting this thing to start is sometimes a real hassle. You have a manual choke here, which you can adjust in a lot of different positions. So when the bike is hot or cold, you can play with the choke and Sometimes it wants to go and sometimes it just says uh, go yourself and walk home. So yeah, let's get into it. So let's go ahead and remove the cylinder head. I'm actually going to try and scan the head and mill a copper gasket with my CNC mill. I've always wanted to try it and uh, it could be good that I can mill gaskets in the future for yeah, different projects or gaskets that are impossible to find. So when I talk about rarity on this bike, for example, the, the bike is missing a front light. And uh, I think I have this bike for seven or eight years, I think. And I still haven't found a headlight. I did manage now to get a headlight that might fit, but it's definitely not original. Please? Yes, there we go. So you can see here the spark plug. Again, coffee with some milk. Perfect. But... Oh my god, I've hit the fuel. <laughs> so yeah, the fuel leaks out of the carburetor. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to take this to the office because I don't have a scanner at home. I'm going to scan it, try to draw it in CAD and uh, find some copper sheet so we can mill a new one. It would be possible to make it by hand, but I've always wanted to try to mill one so uh, I can mill gaskets in the future. I didn't find any copper gasket material to mill a head gasket out of, but I did find this. It's a reinforced, I don't know what's it called, a composite gasket material, which should be good, I think. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to sandwich the gasket in between uh, two pieces of MDF. I'm going to mount it on the CNC table and um, try milling a new gasket. I know this might be overkill, but I think it's fun to experiment with this thing and uh, maybe I can make uh, more difficult gaskets in the future. 
So a small introduction to my mill. I'm not going to go into detail uh, on this channel unless specifically asked for. It's a Arduino based uh, homemade CNC mill. It mills aluminum, which I have been experimenting with. I did some aluminum parts, so uh, it should be fine. So I'm going to mount this on the table and put you guys on time lapse. Well, that definitely didn't go to plan. It's the hole is, is cut, but I think this end mill is uh, thrash. Uh, I'm going to take another end mill. This was a four flute one. I think I'm going to try with two flutes and another material. So hopefully it won't burn up then. got a gasket I have to admit after cutting out the center section I didn't think this would work so well I suspected it to come out far worse I did give it a little bit the edges a little bit of clean with a bit of sandpaper and a file so now for the biggest test which is is it correct does it fit oh wait maybe flipped Oh, it's so close. A little bit of persuasion. So when my measurements are a bit off, or maybe the accuracy of my mill is a bit off, which I know it is, it's off by half a millimeter. Come on, it's so close. It wants to fit. Yes. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Sweet! Nice, let's put the head back on. So the cylinder head is back on. We have this cute little carburetor here from the Royal Noor. It's also super, super simple. You have the main jet, the main and only jet. That fits in here. And then you have a copper washer and then there is this tiny bowl that actually feeds the main jet and it acts a bit like a a buffer so you have the main fuel bowl which flows fuel into this a smaller bowl and then this feeds the the jet not sure why they do it like this but it's a pretty cool concept and then we have the copper float this is going in now the hole in the ball there where the float goes in was actually still full of debris ah, there we go yes that's it so all fresh and clean let's put it back so the carb is back on, the head is tight. Let's see if uh, grandpa wants to make some noise. Maybe choke. I'm not sure how far I'll have to put it. So to start this bike, you have to actually put it in gear. Actually, that's good. Maybe a 
a bit more choke. Tighten this nut again. It sounds pretty chunky. It has a bit of a wrap to it. So my camera battery died on me when I was explaining the problem. So basically the problem was that uh, there's a screw here and that's basically a tab that holds the throttle slide in the correct position. That screw came loose so the throttle slide was actually able to rotate within the, the carburetor. So the throttle slide was uh, reversed or actually 90 degrees uh, rotated which yeah makes the bike not run or run like crap so now the screw is back in in its place the throttle slide is in correctly and now the bike runs again which is good the last thing i have to do to get this bike spring ready uh, i found a headlight that is definitely not the correct one but it'll fit oh, here. it'll fit in between the mounts I didn't clean it on purpose so it would actually blend a bit I think it looks meh, somewhat okay but at least then I'll have a working light which is kind of important as you can see I have been running it for a while <laughs> With uh, just the wires tied together for the rear light to work, it actually made the rear light, uh, or it actually made the bulb burn through because it had too much current. So, yeah, I have to connect one of these wires to here, actually both, because uh, this is the positive terminal. And uh, yeah, I've already fitted two new bulbs okay well we have a light it actually has a switch on the back here for a I think is no light a low light and a high beam maybe I don't know we'll have to check if we actually get some light through this I thought I had terminals to crimp on here, but apparently I don't, or I don't have them anymore. So I'm going to trim a bit more and just squeeze in between the nut. 
maybe this should be one of the first uh, rides for the spring with this bike. Go get some some terminals to mount these wires a bit better. Well, they'll hold for now. So the only thing now is I have to f uh, open this rear light up, which is actually a pretty cool light. I think it should come out when I uh, loosen this nut here and check if I have a bulb. Oh wait. How does this thing open? I don't want to break it. But you have to be able to replace the bulb, right? Does this screw on? Oh, yeah. This screw is open. Oh, cool. Look at that. It's so cool. Whew. Some 1950s dust is coming out. Yeah, I think I have bulbs like this. This real light is so cool. <coughs> Made in Belgium. We got a front light, but no rear. I think I have already burned through one of the lights. The other one isn't working. This one is. Are we having a rear light now? Nope. No front. No rear. It's already blown through. It's already gone. The rear one is going bright now because it's the only one. The front one is still broken, I think. Now we have two. So I'm going to keep it in this position. Uh, they are a bit less bright than the other ones, but at least uh, I don't think these will burn through. This thing doesn't have to have super bright lights because I, I probably won't be driving this in the dark. Cool, this thing is all set. So, Maybe tomorrow I'll take it for a test drive uh, down to the store to maybe grab a terminal to permanently fit the wires. But uh, yeah, it's a complete bike now. Cool.
just got back from her test drive. Everything went well. She's back in her parking spot now. So uh, as you can see in the clip, it's a real hassle to drive. The gears are really hard to get. And uh, yeah, taking off the clutches is very hard and uh, doesn't have a lot of power to engage. She sounds pretty cool, I think. She has a real nice uh, tone to it on, on idle. And uh, when driving, it sounds like uh, a supercharger, which is pretty funny. Also pretty funny when I uh, got to the store or I actually getting ready to depart. Uh, a random stranger came up to me. Wow, what a cool bike. This, uh, this thing is so old, what year is it? And uh, he was all wowed by it and uh, he was amazed on uh on the condition of it and it runs still fine so uh it's pretty funny that's a a benefit of driving old bikes sometimes you meet uh, random people and uh hear random stories uh with the flandria uh, models i get that a lot because flandria was very popular here in belgium and uh, a lot of people had them and sometimes when i go out on one and uh they always come up to me, wow, what a, hey, a Flandria, it's cool, I used to have one of those. Or uh, my dad had one of them, I learned to drive on him. And uh, yeah, pretty cool sometimes. So I guess that's it for the for Grandpa. Uh, that one is also done for spring now, it's ready to go for some nice drives. Uh, I hope I can take it out more. But it will be limited to city centers, because uh, as you could see, it only does 40 kilometers an hour and being a motorbike that's really annoying uh, today it was pretty calm on the road so uh, yeah I got lucky so thank you for watching uh, if you want to see more spring maintenance we still have some to do so if you want to see more subscribe for more and uh, leave a like if you liked the video or if you learned something and uh, see you guys in the next one ciao